Welcome back to another edition of The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is a cannabis business podcast. In my opinion, one of the biggest indicators of legitimization or foreshadowing for the, the legalization is tax. We just know from, from in the past with the, the housing boom of 2008, states and cities, municipalities, government agencies, everyone relies on that tax, whether it's real estate or cannabis, it's not going anywhere because they're relying on that money. That's just the, the simple facts. So I look at stories like cannabis exempt from sales tax and <clears throat> producers arguing whether or not they have to pay it is an indication of legitimization. Whereas before we were doing anything we could just to be in business. And now that there are companies pushing back and saying, no, we're not gonna pay these taxes, we're exempt. That's just driving that legalization or at least legitimacy forward. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, one of their most prominent medical marijuana producers has filed a lawsuit against the state arguing that it is entitled to a 1.5 million in gross receipt tax deductions because medical cannabis products are considered prescription drugs under the state law. In a complaint filed in January 17th in the 1st District of Santa Fe, New Mexico, Top Organics Ultra Health alleges that the New Mexico Department of Taxation and Revenue refused to process the deductions due to the bias against medical cannabis. Quote, medical cannabis meets the definition of a prescribed drug under any common sense interpretation of the relevant status. In withholding a refund based on the deduction for prescription drugs, the Department of Taxation and Revenue has acted unlawfully. Ultra Health is arguing that in a complaint, it renders certifications for medical cannabis equivalents to prescriptions as defined by the law and that the licensed nonprofit producers like Ultra Health should be eligible for that deduction. They're seeking a $1.5 million refund, interest, attorney fees, and costs. The CEO and president of Ultra Health said that his organization pays millions of dollars in combined federal taxes, state taxes, licensing fees, and continues to pay gross receipts taxes despite disagreeing with the state's interpretation of the law. That burden is only going to grow and it gets passed on to the patients, said the CEO. The CEO also said that the lawsuits are not indications of litigiousness, but rather on ultra health being on the forefront of issues. It's a clear effort on our behalf to represent the views of the patients and to allow the producers to stand up for themselves. Trademarks and patents are also up in the air when it comes to you know, federal requirements. The, the LEAF isn't really something that has been able to be patented. My understanding, there's only one company called Cannabis Basics, uh, a local company here in Seattle. All Warner was able to get what I believe is, is the world's, uh, US's first patent, uh, excuse me, trademark with a cannabis LEAF on it. But this company in Maine is claiming that they trademarked CBD coffee. And that comes from, you know, back in the early 90s, their name is Coffee by Design. They shortened it to CBD, but the timing is, is no coincidence. They just changed it for obvious reasons. And now they're claiming that their, their name has been this thing the whole time, this acronym, and it's causing confusion, which you be the judge. There's a 25-year-old brand in Maine called Coffee by Design. Opened in 1994, selling coffee and espresso in an area of Portland once known as the Porn District. This is Portland, Maine, although that could be confusing with Portland, Oregon as well. They're claiming that within a few years, the coffee shop had a nickname amongst locals, CBD. And that wasn't an issue for a long time until CBD coffee came around. Things started to change when Maine legalized cannabis in 2016 as a broader loosening of cannabis regulations around the U.S. This brought attention to a little-known compound called cannabidiol, or CBD, a compound of cannabis and hemp that doesn't get you high, but can treat ailments like anxiety and insomnia, according to proponents. Soon, Portland, Maine, coffee shops began selling CBD, charging customers to add a few drops of their, into their java, so signs appeared around town offering CBD coffee and consumers started asking coffee by design. They had other places that, that were offering CBD. So one customer was bewildered when a competing coffee shop told him CBD coffee included a $5 surcharge, leaving him to wonder if coffee by design was jacking up prices. 
The coffee by design owners say that they're fine with competitors offering CBD extract, but arguing that putting CBD coffee on the menu infringes on their trademark. For the last several months, the company's founders have been discussing their options with the attorney while thinking about how to best protect their trademark and staying true to the values of the collaboration and community. At the same time, they're getting ready to make phone calls to local coffee shops selling cannabidiol. The blame primarily lies with the lack of guidance and FDA confirmed research on CBD. Ultimately, CBD products don't have any labeling standards or dosage guidelines. And in many instances, customers aren't aware of how much CBD they're receiving in restaurants or coffee shops. And that using CBD in food and beverages, it's become difficult for some consumers to determine what items on a menu contain CBD and which ones don't. So until there's a better way to pass along this labeling and dosage info to the consumer, it could be difficult for CBD edibles of any form to thrive. We could wait for the FDA to give us approval or we could just take it over state by state. So today you have 50 states, it would require 38 states or three fourths to ratify the two thirds resolution enacted by Congress to repeal the designation of cannabis as a schedule one drug. Since 33 states have legalized some form of cannabis, and additional states are looking to at legalization, it's highly likely that five or more states would join an effort to remove cannabis from Schedule One of the Controlled Substance Act of 1970. And with that, we're gonna roll this one up. This is Talking Hedge, I'm Josh Kincaid, and I'm out.